Hello and welcome to a Monday edition of JC3D. Today I'm going to show you how to 3D model a hatchet in Cinema 4D R25. So, so far what I've done is just take a couple of photographs. This one I got from a website for a product photo. These ones here I just took from my desk. I've got the hatchet right here. And so let's see, let's jump right in. Um, guess what I'll do is start off up here. So I'm going to make a square. Just scale it down. I'm going to go for the center right here first, like this. Kind of get that down a little bit. Like so. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. This was just to kind of make the scale of all the different guides line up. So we'll go in here, pop this underneath a subdivision surface like that. Current state it to an object. I'm going to go in here so I can see it a little better. Like that. And then... Um, I'm just going to scale it like this. Like that right there. And then go to face mode right here. And select the top. So the, the D hotkey. Bring that up to about there. I'm going to grab the bottom here. Do the same thing. Hit the D hotkey. Like that. Looks like it gets cut off right there. But I guess I'll make it the same thing and then I'll cut it after. So that's the orange and the black right there. So I'm just going to right now make it one object. Then I'll go through and cut those so I can have different colors. So I'll have to make it a little bit wider here. But um, I'll do that after. So I'm just going to go like this. Like that. And rotate that bottom one. Kind of put it like this. Oops, I got the scale tool going. There we go. Okay. One more time. Probably cut. Maybe I'll cut that. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so let's see. So what I'm going to do is just go into point mode real quick. Like that. And just select all these right here. Kind of move them in a little. Something like that. Boom. Looks like I got to rotate the guy just a little bit. Boom. Maybe like that. All right. Then what I'm going to do is select these faces. <clears throat> the ones on each side like this. So I'll go to this rectangle selection tool. Go down here. Whoops. Yeah. My face mode there. Yeah, I am. Okay. Grab those, then I'll grab all these. So I got everything but the top and the bottom there. And then hit the D hot key. And move it out like that. And then from the top view, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to scale this a little bit like this. Like that. I've got like that oval look. All right. Now I just want to place these a little bit better. So I'm going to go into point mode here. And just grab those points with the rectangle selector tool like this point like that. I might have to subdivide the center there to get that line to pop out and just rotate that like that pop it down there in the corner same thing with this one here rotate it pop it right there all right, I want to add that subdivision right here. So I'll go up to Mesh, Cut, Loop Path Cut like that. Boom. I'm just moving that down. Okay. Take a look at what's going on right there. All right, so I want to get this piece up here, and this is going to kind of go flat a little bit more. So, back to face mode here. Select the top row. Hit the D hotkey. And I'm going to 
point mode here. Just kind of rotate that a little bit. Me. And then let's see. I think we're going to want to extrude these out. So I'm just going to turn off that subdivision surface so I can see what's going on down there. Go into face mode, rectangle selection, and then grab this one here and this side here. And I think that's going to be it now. Do I want that little piece? I guess I'll grab that little doohickey down there too on each side. Okay, let's see how this goes. Hit D. Grab the points, going into point mode. It's going to lift this up a little bit. Let's see if that's going to work. Okay. I think I can just bring this one right out. So I'm just looking at the guy down here. This side here, let me see what's going on there. Okay. All right, so then what I want to do is just grab these like this and I'm just going to make sure they're all straight like that. And rotate them a little bit. Same thing with this one. So they're all a little bit kind of random there. I'm just going to scale them straight like that. This might help if I look at it like this, okay. Looks about right. The closer you put that, the more tight it'll be. <clears throat> okay, so let me just turn this back on. Alright. Now I can take these right here, these faces. If you go to this live selection tool you can paint them like this might help to go into this window all right it looks like i got them all and then i'm just going to flatten those like this Now, at this point, what I can do is I can do a, um, a cut, loop path cut tool right down the middle of this thing. If I just hold shift, let's see, will it go straight for me? It's not going too straight right there, but let me just do it anyway, and then do a loop path selection, loop selection here on that. Is it going to loop for me? Select. Now, what tool are you in there? Let's see. Select loop. So when I get that one, I want to make sure that it's um, zeroed out. So I'm going to go down here to this one, hit zero like that, and then just delete everything else on this side. And make sure that this one's in the middle. Right there like that. Then I can put a symmetry tool. Drop that down there. Make sure you get the right plane here. I'll turn that back on. Now whatever I do to this one side, it'll do to the other side. Alright, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let me just clean this one up a little bit. Okay. 
Then I've got this piece right in here. So I'm just hide this. I'm gonna grab another cube. Put it up here. Scale it down. I should be able to get the thickness up here. I'm just gonna current state this to an object and go into point mode. Grab everything, scale it like like that. Be a little bit bigger. All right. And then just block it out in here. Alright, then I'm just going to subdivide this. Go to my um, mesh cut loop path cut tool. And then let's see, I need one right here. And I'm just going to take these and extrude them out real quick. This back piece right here, like this. In the the D key, and then scale them down. Number ten. And then I'm gonna move those bottom points right there, like that. And then um, let me take this piece here. the bottom like that hit um, D and then go down again like that and then move this point in over here whoops gotta go in the point mode just tuck that in over there like that tuck this one over here save these guys Now, let's see if this works. I'm gonna go cut, loop path cut, and just put a loop path cut right here. And right here. And then, let's see if I do one here. here. Is that gonna work right there? Let's try it. And right, throw that underneath the subdivision surface like this. Boom. And then I'll just kinda like line it up a little bit better. Tuck that in like that. Check this one out. All right, let me see what it looks like with this one. Looks pretty cool. Okay. I know that down here, this is going to be hollow. Also gets a little wider at the bottom right here so select let me just grab it from this view maybe oops right there let's select these guys and then I'm gonna scale them out a little oh see that how it's going right there I've got that symmetry thing going on, so if I go into this axes mode right here, put the Z on zero, just like that, hit zero, it moves it to the center. Then if I go back, now when I do the scale out, it works kind of better like that. Yeah, sometimes when you're doing things, you might want to take this setup right here, the symmetry tool, like that, current state it to an object, like this, and delete. Now it's one polygon, but if I do this next move, it 
it helps me that it's one polygon because I want to select everything like this and then hit the, the I hotkey like that. Maybe I'll just scale this a little bit like this. Then hit the D hotkey. Like that. That's kind of what it looks like. About like that it actually has another another one inside of a different color which kind of looks like if I just select maybe just the bottom part here would be enough like this much select invert and delete it and take all that and let's see scale it down a little bit Then when I'm doing the materials, I can make this one black, like that. But the outside one's going to be orange. All right. Let's see. I'm just seeing this little hole right down here. Let's see, so I'll scroll it down. So we could drop this in a volume builder, or I might just use a Boolean. The Boolean, it won't really look as good um, when you're trying to have like the edges with the bevels and stuff. The volume builder does better. So yeah, we'll see what happens when I cross that bridge. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I want to be able to see through this. I'm just going to go down to line mode. Rotate that 90 degrees. Pop it over here. Like that. And then if you're in object mode, you get these little yellow dots here, and you can change that. Scale that to match the guide right there. And then that wants to run through. Yeah, it actually, it's actually on each side like this. Like so. So let's see, I think I can take this object right here. Let's say I just put that underneath the symmetry for now. Like this. Oh, let me save my scene real quick. Good idea to save your scene. Boom. Okay. So make sure that the mirror plane is correct there. Okay, it looks like that. Now I can take and put this underneath the volume tool. Like so. Drop that in there. And increase these subdivisions. Let's see, we're going to 122. And I'm just going to group everything else and hide it for now. Now you've oftentimes got to take this and just keep going down. I'll start by dividing by four. Let's divide by four again. It starts to look like the object and you're getting close. Once it starts looking really good, it sort of starts to bog the computer down a little bit. So I'll go right there. We'll stop for there. And then uh, if I bring back this handle down here. I think it's this one right here. So I'll copy and paste that. And then I'll hide this. Now I don't know as though this has a thickness right now. So what I'm going to do is um, I think I'm going to trim off this bottom here. Let's see. I'm going to go into face mode like this. Do select loop. And I'm just going to select this little detail down here. And hit delete. There we go. And then um, I don't think I need much more up here, really. So I'll delete that. If you select this and hit uh, hotkey U and then W, it selects everything that's touching that one. But since there's a gap down here, it doesn't touch that. So hit delete. And now uh, here, let me hit my uh, cloth tool here, cloth surface. And I'll drop that underneath that. Turn off subdivision to zero and then change this 
to negative 5. No, negative 2. Okay, so that gives it a thickness. And then I just want to make sure that these are in there like that. Okay. Now, let me see. I should be able to leave just the ring that's inside here of these two. So if I drop that down into this. Now, let's see. I guess it didn't like that. Um, maybe it wasn't subdivided enough or is it still calculating it? Uh, let's see. So, okay, so there it comes. Now, if we go into here, down in the attribute manager, there's another little mini object manager. Let's try intersect. All right, there it is right there. So then if I turn back on this model, now all I need to do is punch a hole through here with a cylinder. Uh, let me drop that down. Let me piggyback it underneath this for a, just one short second. Make sure you're in object mode and then see the numbers down here, zero those out. It's kind of kibbying out because it's uh, I've got this volume tool thing going on. So I'll just make a copy of it and do it up here. So zero this out, boop, boop. Make sure the rotation's also zeroed out. Then you can get that out of there and delete that tube and then scale this down. It should be in the right spot. Hmm, totally not. <laughs> Let's see, where's the tube? Copy, paste. Let's try that one more time. Zero out, translation, and the rotation. Boom, okay. Boom, 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 like this, scale it down. Get it to be about the size of those right there because we're gonna cut that out. I'm gonna just increase the subdivisions. Go to like 32. Now make a Boolean. If you just shut off high quality and see if it looks good like that, it goes a little bit faster. Let me test that first and then um, just grab this object, put it underneath there, put this, that underneath there. Uh, let's see, what did I do? Um, Maybe put this on top. Yeah, there we go. So now that should be cutting a hole through. Oh, we also need to put the black one in there. So if you take this up here, hit uh, option G, that just puts it underneath a null. You can also grab something and make it a brother or sister. So I grab this one, just drop it underneath there, and then it's gonna cut that out of there too. And it looked like this color was black. Whoops. Um, this one okay all right that looks pretty good now let's see um, I'm just looking at that guy right there thinking there we go I'll just have it stick out a little bit more like that all right, but this also had that other cut, so I can take care of that in this one too. If we go up here to the top of this orange, there's this shape right here, so I'm gonna draw that around this whole shape there. So I go into um, pen tool there, spline pen. Turn that on, and then I just wanna get boom, 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 boom. I'm come down here, I'll get a little bit closer to what it is. It's kind of following down this. Points a little bit close together if you want them to be tighter like that. And boom. Boom, boom, boom. We'll close that off like that. Now that can become an extrude like this. Just want to make sure that this is covering everything like that. So if I just grab all these and move them back, looks like we should be good. Like that. Now that cylinder down there is cutting. 
So if I take the cylinder, put that underneath the knob by hitting Option G, I could just put this like, uh, I don't know, maybe call it cut, I'm not sure. But then just drop that under there with that. There you go, that's gonna cut it out. And then you wanna get the other one there. Just copy this, paste it, go into the Boolean. Is it A intersect B? Yeah. All right, and then if I look at my colors, this top part's black. Oops. This part's black. And this part is the orange. Push that all that. Like that. All right, and then um, I've got this blade coming out. So let me just group everything, hide it, save the scene here, add a cube. It actually kind of looks like the blade might be part of this, but I'll just make it as a little separate object here. All right, so I'm going to like this, translate to object, go into point mode, scale it down like that. Look for the top view here to kind of get, you know, how big is it like that? And then scale it like this. Uh, move this side here over a little bit like that. And this one up here wants to scale way down. All right, let me go up here. I'll kind of block this out. Boom. You know, I guess I'll just go for this inner one here and then extrude that once I get the shape. Boom. Mm, let's go there. And then there, okay, and then I'm just gonna subdivide this real quick so I can kind of get a little bit more of the shape. Mesh, cut, loop path cut, right there, right there. And then pull it out to match it a little better. Now I'll throw that underneath the subdivision surface like this, and then go in there and add a loop, you know, a cut, loop path cut. You want to add some up here, down here, perhaps here, and right on the tip there. Okay. Now what I want to do is select those endpoints there, right here. Is that too much? Yep. So just go into live selection, just deselect that and that. All right. Now if I hit D, just want to go to here. Like that, just going to scale it up a little bit. All right. Now let me see. Can I go in subdivide? I'm gonna add. Try to add right in the middle of this right here. A cut so that I can grab these points in the middle. Here, 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 here. Bring them down a little like this. That looks like I wanted this one to. Boom. Just bring them like that. And like that. Okay, and then if I go back to that cutter tool, cut, loop path cut, I want to add one here. Another there. Okay. Looks pretty good. Oh, it looks like it's a little bit too wide though, right? Let me see. Okay. 
looks like what needs to happen is these need to get a little bit bigger. Then I'll grab this guy. Select loop, do 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 do. Run like this. And then if it just hit U Y, it like extends it like that. And I'm gonna hit the hotkey D and just see what happens here. Boom. And then make it a little wider. I just see this little guy right here, so I'm gonna tuck that in. That looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is get a, let's see, some kind of a texture going for that. So I can look in here, just look for metal. This is in the asset browser. Click on materials. I kind of, got, kind of got this gray one over here. So I'm just looking over here to see if anything looks kind of like that. This one sort of does right there. So if I give that one a try and then this one looks kind of neat. Let's see. Click on this little orb there and you get those. So I want to drop that on that and that. All right. All right. And this is what the other one looked like. That looks pretty cool too. But I think I kind of like this one. You can always go into these. And you can kind of change the color. Whoops. Let's see. Yeah, let me see if this works. No, well, yeah, a little bit it did. So maybe if I go a little bit grayer. Like that. Okay, I think I can live with that. Now, I believe I noticed on this guy right here. I'm gonna put this down here and hide this. Save my scene. I noticed there was like this grip right here. Kind of like that. It kind of looks like it like takes away right there. Where do they rise up? Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty subtle. But, um,. If I wanted to do something like that, I could go, I could build the splines like this and project them on there. So I'll, I can show you what that would be like really quickly. Um, each one of them kind of has the same idea. It's just a bunch of splines. So say if I took a spline just to make something that I could use for each one of these, and then I'll just cut them up after. Um, I would go like this. I'd just take a spline like this and kind of maybe make like 10 of them across so one two three four five. and then make these b spline and they kind of like zero them out like this boom and then maybe i can make it a, a little bit smaller something like that all right and then i could take this and put it underneath a cloner right here Drop that like that. And then this I could put on linear. And then make the spacing a little bit less so it's like one, maybe three, maybe two. And then increase them so there's more of them. Like that. And then, um, let me see if I can move the null here. Without, no, okay, so that's, you can't move the null on that. But one way to get around it is just group it like that then move the null like that all i'm really doing is looking for a pivot point so let's see 
Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Go like this, back into the regular mode here, and then let's line that up with one of these like this. Or or something. So I'm just shooting for this one right here. All right. Now, say if I take this, I'm just going to copy it. That'll be kind of like my template. Go like that. Paste it. Now this one here, I'm going to take this here and current state it to an object. And delete. Now that makes it all one spline like this. If I select all the points, you can see them all like that. But then you see here, I'm going to put a cut. So I'll take this. And it helps in doing these cuts, I think, to go into linear mode. Stay in linear mode. So mesh line cut and then I just put this end right here and then this over here like that boom hit escape and then down here do I want to move anything um, I think maybe I could go like this let me see if I do it like this right along the edge like that cut now if I can um, select the points that are just within here which if you do this polygon selection tool it'll help you do that so you select the boundary of it like this All right. now that should have got everything that's inside of it and that so select invert it's kind of hard to see on that orange background but select invert and then hit delete Okay, so now you just have those points right there like that. All right, so then you can take that. And let's see, let's get something out here that we can project it onto. I'm gonna grab that guy. And then I wanna make sure that the points are not in it. They gotta be on one side of it, so I'll push them over to this side like this. Okay, and then this is the view we're going to use. So this window's got this gray box around it. And I go to Mesh, I'm sorry, Spline, Move, Project. And then hit Apply. It's going to use the view right here. And it projects that right on there like that. Now you could do a couple of different things with that. Once it's on there, turn that, I think, to B-Spline like this. Okay, so say for example, if I make a volume builder, I've got this guy in there. So again, you got to kind of like, I'm going to divide by eight. See the computer starting to slow down a little bit. Divide by two. Oh, you know what it's not liking? I know what it's not liking. Let me get that back up to a bigger number. It's not liking that this is not a watertight object. Um, so to make it watertight, you can do that with a really quick trick where you just add a cloth surface. Boom, drop it in there. We'll go negative two. It's a little bit weird down there. Let's see if it works anyway. Drop that underneath there. All right, so see now the volume builder works better with it. So those splines, you can drop those in there too. And then we need a little more detail. So I'll divide by two. Maybe one more time, divide by two. And then you're gonna get to be able to pick the size of this if you click on it. So the radius is right here, so I can make that smaller, 0.5. And then the density, maybe 1.0. Now that, you can then subtract from the object. Then you can start to get that, that handle detail right there. Maybe I need to pull it out a little bit here. Or maybe make it a little bit bigger, 0.5, maybe 0.75 is better. Not really. You can make the overall volume smaller, divide by two. So, yeah, if I wrestle with this 
and plot all those lines out, I would have the grip of the handle there. So that's, that's one way that you could kind of get that detail going now. It, it gets a little bit slow with the volume tool, but you could work your way through that and blast them on there. Um, let's see. Yeah, then another way might be, say you've got this object. You could put that underneath a, a sweep tool right here and add rectangle, make the two children of the sweep and then just make that rectangle a lot smaller. Like that. These might want to be piece blind. Okay, they are. Oh, okay. So then make this a little bit bigger. Yeah. Something kind of like that. And then block your way around there and you can go there there if you need to get all that kind of grip detail in 3d that might be another kind of way to do it you have to play play with it like this and maybe pull these out a little bit so that you can see them one by one so yeah if you needed that detail on there that'd be take a little bit more into the 3d model here there should be um a hole right there Not quite sure why that's not a hole. Just make sure that this thing's big enough, maybe. Oh yeah, okay, so maybe it's not going through both sides. Mm, is that what's going on with it? Huh. No. It's definitely this thing here. Interesting. Oh, that's the one up there. Okay, I see. So, what I could do is... Maybe just delete this bottom part. Let me see if this works. No, it's not going to come up there again. Maybe this one? Nope. Hmm. It's going to hide everything but this guy. See, so you're popping that up because. So it doesn't even need that down there. So if I just get rid of it. Boom. Whoops. Okay. That's good. All right. So now let me take this into a scene, do a quick render. So let's save this. Going my, to my latest scene here I was working on. Mm hmm. Okay, Cupid's bow and arrow. Right before I started the show, somebody bought the taco. I don't know what episode that was, but it was a few episodes ago. We did, I think, a 3D model of a taco. Um, did I do it with YouTube for that? I think I did. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Boink. Paste in my hatchet. Throw that in there. Get a, good, get a good look at it. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Let me get another view like this.
All right, thank you very much for watching today. Please like and subscribe. If you've got any ideas for a 3D model, let me know. Or if anything else I can do for you. Just like it uh, down there and uh, post your comments and I'll read them. And if you can uh, tell your friends about it, it'd be great. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day.